<clears throat> Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Today I am uh, highlighting our uh, rabbit hats. And what these are is uh, actually uh, brush piles that were built in, let's see, 2012. So that's they've been in existence for seven years and what we did is I had a basically a, a small civil pasture right here that we kind of cleared out this is all timber there's still trees in here but we took out a lot of them and we had a lot of big logs and so the base of this has got well there's one of them there's three more in there and what we did is we laid the base down and you space the logs out where there are some distance between them. And the rabbits and stuff can get back in there. And the coyotes can't dig them out. Okay. And as I said earlier in one of my other videos, the key thing about rabbit tats is when it's raining a lot, the baby rabbits can get in there and dust and get their little fur dry. And they won't get pneumonia. Uh, a rabbit, a baby rabbit that gets wet and can't get dried off in the early spring, that's a dead rabbit. Now, you've got to build a pretty good brush pile over the top of this rabbit hat, or the coyotes can just, you know, get up on top and dig them out, or a stray dog, or bobcat, or whatever. But see, we, this has been in here seven, seven years, and we've got, uh, well, there's one. There's another one. See the tin on it. See, there's there's three. I usually go for three pieces of tin, about eight feet wide. And uh, this one here's about six. But there's one. There's another one, two, and then of course this one laying on the ground up there's three. Three pieces. No, there's four. No, there's three. One, two, and there's the other one up there underneath that log. So I run them, uh, you know, just perpendicular over the top of my logs that are laying on the ground. So my logs are running, you might say north and south, and my my uh, my tin is running east and west. Okay, and you lap it, give it a couple inches lap so the water <laughs> can run off. And I like putting my rabbit hats on a little bit of an angle. Um, don't put them right out on the flat top of the ground. You want a little bit of drainage on that thing. Because when it's raining heavily, the, the water can move out. You don't have water pooling underneath your rabbit hat. Because, you know, that's, you basically what you've got, got here is you've got a building, metal, metal shed roof, and water hitting that, and it needs to be able to leave that area. That's the whole purpose is to get the water away and have a dry, safe, uh, secure place for baby bunnies to dry off and escape predators. But we've got... Uh, there's there's one ah, there's one up there and of course the one that I'm standing by there's two <clears throat> there's three and there's another one four and these are about probably 30 feet apart and then I cross the creek over there and there's uh there's one two three four going down that other valley over there so I've got a total of about nine rabbit hats here in a big huge semicircle and the, the nice thing about the rabbit hat, uh, w one other key component is you've got to have briars. And we've got a big briar patch right on the, and there's little briar patches leading to the big briar patch. If you don't have briars, I'm talking about uh, blackberry briars or, or dewberry, yeah, dewberries, um, raspberry type briars, even multiferose bushes, anything that uh, rabbits can feed on in the winter time they eat on a lot of that stuff okay you gotta have food you, you, you got the rabbit hat here okay but you also got to have some food in here for these rabbits to, to feed on but there's a big valley goes all the way up through there's, there's just briars up and down this draw and so you can come in the winter time and it's just loaded i mean there's just rabbit tracks up and down this valley and it's all compliments of giving them a place to raise their young ones and be safe from predators. Because, you know, everything likes eating a rabbit. And, uh, I, you know, I said, I've made this comment. It's from other people that have studied this, uh, wildlife biologists, that 
Rabbits can usually escape a coyote for about 50 feet, 40 to 50 feet, and he needs some place to get in. And they're a lot more apt to use these rabbitats if you've got them adequately spaced. Don't get them too far apart. Because when that rabbit takes off running and goes from this one over to that one up on the hill, coyote might catch him, you know, before he gets there, and then you don't have any rabbits uh, populating. And, you know, I've I got a little bit of ridicule from people. Oh, you know, rabbits this, rabbits that. Why would you want rabbits? And, you know, what's rabbits got to do with grazing on your farm? Well, I tell you, folks, I'll, I'll say this on this video, is for every species that you can attract onto your farm, it, is sport, it supports eight additional ones. And, you know, I, I like that. It, it's like a domino effect, okay? Um, look at this. So we got the rabbit hat right here. But look what's mounted in that tree right there. Man, this this is uh, this is an awesome place to hunt. Matter of fact, uh, I just got my eight-point buck here uh, yesterday coming down this valley. Okay, so now I've got the deer. I've got the rabbits. We've got turkey on this farm. Oh, the other thing. I, I, I almost forgot. These rabbit tats are great for supporting field mice. There's all kinds of mice in these things, too. And mice are a prime food for coyotes. Well, oh, well, why are you feeding the coyotes, Greg? Well, the coyotes are a natural part of this ecosystem. And we don't, you know, we are predator friendly. We don't shoot coyotes. And uh, the, the coyotes actually are a balancing tool. And we don't have any problem with predation on our sheep. Because we've got guard dogs in there and our cows, because they're mobbed up, you just don't ever see coyotes in there. Um, so it's all natural. Uh, I think it's a, I think that's just the way it should work. And, you know, if you got this idea that you got to kill everything, oh, you got to kill the coyote. Oh, you got to kill all the rabbits because they're eating my grass and my clover. Well, let's, let's go ahead and, you know, kill all the deer because they're eating all of our forage. Folks, it's just a never ending cycle and you will go broke. If you will learn to manage in sync with nature. You can make a very good living on the land and the wildlife. That's a true sign of balance on your farm when you start seeing all these different types of wildlife show up. And so you ought to reach up and pat yourself on the back. You got rabbits running over and squirrels and you see field mice and coyotes, coons, possums, skunks, even skunks. <laughs> um, you know, that's a good thing. It's a really good thing. And so... I embrace diversity, not just in my grasses and my forages, but I think we need rabbits. And so that's why this rabbit hat thing, I wanted to give a talk on that. And uh, so, yeah, folks, embrace, embrace diversity on your farm and in your forages, and you will, I I'm, I'm promise you, you'll have a lot easier go of it. And it's, it's hard killing stuff that wants to live. I had a guy tell me that once. He was spraying crops. And he's trying to spray and spray and spray and spray. And he said, Greg, you know how hard it is to kill something that wants to live? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's got to be just super depressing. He goes, well, it is. And it's expensive. It's expensive to kill stuff, to spray it and all this. So I'm not about that. We're, we're, we're more on diversity and, and embracing what, what this world has given us and Mother Nature and, and trying to manage in sync with that. And with that, I'm going to sign off. Everyone have a great day.